Mandela hypnotherapist, transformation coach, and a spiritual teacher. You're about to listen to a recording of one of my regression sessions. If you enjoy the content on my channel, please consider subscribing. And if you click on the bell, it will inform you of any of my future postings. Also, leave a comment and click like, because that helps to bring this kind of content to more viewers. I hope you enjoy the recording, and I hope to see you again in my future videos. And I'd like you to tell me the very first thing that you see as you reach the surface. Grass. It's thin grass, lots of dirt. Mm -hmm. Look down at where your feet would be and tell me what you're wearing on your feet. Nothing. Now become aware of your body and tell me what you're wearing on your body. It's torn, raggedy clothing. Dirty green. Maybe I have a coat, torn coat, and with white underneath. Okay. Are you in a male or female body? I don't know. Are you young or old? I'm young. About what age? 20, 30, somewhere in there. As you begin to take in more details of your surroundings, where are you standing? Like amongst wreckage almost, just everything's in shambles. Burning, maybe smoke, it's hard to tell. What is it that's burning? Maybe a building, a town. I don't see anyone. As you look around, things begin to take shape. What are you sensing? It's like a town that was destroyed. It's like I don't want to see it. It's weird. And it's all right. Remember that white pyramid of light all around you, invisible, but always present. You are completely safe. You will simply observe and receive the information, but emotionally, mentally, and physically, you are completely safe. Become aware of what happened, whatever you're seeing now around you. Fighting war. As you walk through that area, what are you feeling or experiencing? Sadness, horror maybe, just be disbelief. Become aware if this used to be a place where you lived or if you simply happened to be walking by. I've visited before many times. I don't know if I live there, but I'm familiar with it. Was there someone that you know there? I'm seeing a woman. Describe the woman to me. Older than me, gray hair in a bun, older dress maybe, a longer dress, kind of poofy, more. How do you feel about her? Maybe sad. Who is she to you? I think she's my mom. Is this where she lived? I think so. As you're walking through this area, what goes through your mind? It's gone. There's no one there. I don't see anyone. It's deserted. Leave that place for just a moment. And on the count of three, I'd like you to see yourself standing in front of a place where you live. One, two, and three. Just describe to me the first impressions. Older style, white, plants growing on it, big. Victorian is what comes to mind. Gates, bushes. I, don't know, I feel like I am more put together. I'm not dirty anymore. Become aware of what you're wearing. Something red, maybe? I feel like a red jacket. I think I'm a male. I don't know. 
And as you look down at your feet, you'll notice what you're wearing on your feet. Black shoes, it's shiny. Are they male or female shoes? They're definitely male. Go ahead and enter the house and tell me what you notice inside. Marble, shiny floors, staircases, one or two maybe, a butler. Who lives in this house with you? A little kid, a little dog, like a, a Scottish dog, I guess is what you would call it. It's the gray hair. I don't know, I'm seeing maybe a woman, but I can't tell anything about her, just that she's a woman. She's standing in the background. What is her relationship to you? I think we're married. How do you feel about her? Respect for her, maybe? Appreciation, love, admiration. And your child? Love. Is it a boy or a girl? I think both, just two. And how old are they? Three and five. Tell me what you do during the day to occupy your time. I'm away most of the time. I don't know what I do. I was on a ship. I came back. I just feel like that I haven't been there for a while. I don't know why. On the count of three, you'll see yourself doing whatever work you do wherever you go when you're away. One, two, and three. Tell me what you notice. I feel like I'm like a captain of a ship. The military? I don't know. I think so. How do you feel about the work that you do? I feel like I don't like it. Why is that? Because sometimes I have to make decisions that can hurt people and I don't like to be away from my family. How long do you stay away? Months, long time. And where does your work take you? The ocean somewhere. I feel like I'm leading like a warship, maybe. I want you to become aware of any conflicts or any events that you're involved in. Perhaps a specific task or mission. I'm looking at a map with a group. It almost feels like we're arguing about what to do. They're all male. It's like they're leaders. I'm the main leader. I have final say. What are you arguing about? Where to go. Why is that significant? I feel like we're trying to surprise. I'm on a big ship. It's wooden. Maybe mostly wooden. Cannons on the sides. What do you decide in the end? I think I do what I want to do. Which is what? Go to the right. I feel like I'm being pulled towards the right. And I wanted to go back. So just allow yourself to go to the next significant moment in that event or in that operation. Tell me what happens next. I feel like that's like the end. Maybe I didn't take it in the right direction. I don't know. I just feel like it's over. So we're going to rewind a little bit. And you're going to move to the time just before it was over. You're going to know exactly what happened. Just tell me what comes to you. Another ship? It's like a pirate ship. Almost as big as the ship that I'm on, but smaller. It came out of nowhere, it feel like. And then what happens? They're jumping aboard ours. We're fighting. Yeah, I think that's it. What do you do? I fight, try to get them off of our ship. What do you fight with? I feel like we have cannons, but we're too close. 
So we use swords, knives. It's not pretty. There's guns too, like old guns with double barrels, but mainly swords. And how is the battle going? Not good. I think the crew was mainly sleeping. We were comfortable and then ambushed by this ship. It's much smaller than our ship. I don't know why we didn't see it. And as you move to the next significant moment, what happens? I just feel like it's my fault. What happens to you? I'm stabbed. I think I die. Just become aware of whatever mortal wound you receive. And notice where you received it on your body. Right here. It's beside my heart, just in the chest. I'm still alive, but I don't live. When you get stabbed, are you able to breathe? Yeah. I fight more till I can't. So as you leave that life behind, tell me what your first thoughts and feelings are about it. That I'm not always right. Maybe I could listen to other people more. So do you sense that the decision you made was not the right one? Yeah. I feel like I went to war because of what happened to the village I started in. That's why we did that. I was like seeking revenge, but yeah, I was wrong. Get a sense of what country you belong to. I don't know, but the ship that got us was not even who we were at war with. It was like a separate ship. I don't know if I just chose like a dangerous route to get there faster and we didn't make it. I don't really know. As you rise even higher in your awareness, become aware of what purpose your soul set for you for that life. What did it want to experience in that journey? Be satisfied with what you have and stop seeking more. More power, more resources to appreciate what you have in front of you. Is that what you were doing when you left your family? For no, I wasn't appreciating, no. I was seeking revenge. I want you to look down at the wound that resulted in the death and become aware of what internal part of the body was damaged. I feel like I lost too much blood. I think I slowly died. Imagine that fabric made out of light wraps the body, stops the blood loss, heals the wound. The wound is being stitched by the light until the body is whole, releasing from it the trauma of that wound, the trauma of that death, releasing it from the Akashic memory of the soul. And become aware of any remaining family members that were significant to your life and how their lives unfold as they move forward without you. I just feel like they're fine. They're sad, but they're fine. Allow now those images to begin to fade as your you awareness begin to flow, to flow again. Let it go and feel the images that you have seen before. All of a sudden, you rest the blind self to be guided and taken. Tell me the first things that you see as you reach the surface. Just black. Okay. Yeah, how does it feel to be in that black? Not good or bad, really, just neutral almost. I can see a little bit of yellow. And where are you noticing it? The yellow is moving. It's like in a circle and then it winds down and disappears and then comes back, similar to how it was. I almost feel like it's the sun, the sun's energy. And where are you in relation to the sun? Closer, maybe? 
Are you in space? I think so. And how does it feel being there? Tranquil, maybe? Become aware of whether you have any form or physical shape. And I'm small. And you do have a physical form? I think. Just become aware of what your body feels like. It's tiny, big head, little legs, little arms. Do you just float in space or do you have a physical place? I feel like I'm just floating. Is this your natural state? Yeah. And become aware of whether you are traveling somewhere or whether you have specific purpose in being there. I don't feel like I have a specific purpose. I just feel like I'm watching, just observing the energy. Just because I can, I guess. Do you make choices about what to be or do next? I feel like I haven't made one, but I could be trying to make one. So just become more aware of yourself what you are, what you choose to do, where your focus, your attention. Just tell me more about yourself. I don't know, I feel like I'm moving now, but I don't know where I'm going. I could move, but I don't know where to move to, so I'm just drifting. And how do you feel about just drifting? I'm satisfied with it, indifferent, maybe. Tell me the first thing that comes to your mind about your existence. I feel like it doesn't matter what I choose to do. It'd be okay either way. Why did you choose it? I feel like maybe I'm not ready to go back. And as you continue to float and drift, you will begin to remember what came before that prompted you to choose this drifting transition. Yeah, I'm seeing like white. I feel like it's snow. It's cold. And would it be okay? If you just go back and remember that for a moment and then return into this very restful place where all is well. Yeah, deep snow, like I'm walking and it's to the waist, covered in white animal fur. I feel big. Are you in a male or female body? I think I'm male again. I feel like a big man, tall broad shoulders, long hair. I feel like it's white. Maybe I'm 40 or 50. I'm not young, but I've got some time left. 45, maybe, mid 40s. Do you have anything else on you other than the furs? Yeah, I feel like I have some kind of sack on me that's big. What do you notice around you? Other people who look like me with fur and heavy sacks on their backs. Are you traveling somewhere? Yeah, I think we're trying to find shelter. Become aware of how long you've been traveling. A couple days. And why are you traveling through all this snow? Our home was ruined by the snow, and we're trying to find somewhere to go. Like it caved in, maybe. I feel like we live in caves. About how many people are traveling with you? Around 30. A small community of people. Some stayed and some left. 
move forward in time to the moment when you find your destination or choose to stop somewhere. I feel like it's not too much longer. We travel a little bit more and then we are still in snow, but it's less snow. We're in a cave, there's a fire. We're not carrying the sacks anymore. We're sitting around. We have food that we brought, we're cooking it. It's meat. We're settling in, per se. And become aware of anything else that you're wearing under the furs. Still feels like it's animals, like animal hide. And as you settle in, you will start getting a better idea of who's in your group, perhaps if they have specific roles within the community. Describe it to me. I feel as though we are equal. We work together. We appreciate everyone's value. Everyone is valued equally. Every task is just as important as the next. Every member of the community is respected and valued and needed. Do you have a leader? I feel like it's me, but every decision I make is not a decision I make on my own. Every person's opinion and voice matters and it's well considered. Do you have any children with you? Yes, but I don't think any of them are mine. Do you personally have a partner? I feel like I don't. Have you ever had one? Maybe. I feel like she died in childbirth. And what happened to the child? It died, too. It was not viable. Did you ever want to find another partner? Mm -mm. Why? She was still with me, maybe. Like, she guides me through and helped me with every decision thereafter. How do you receive her guidance? Like a voice. I can hear her voice. I know what she would do. So as you become more aware of your physical surroundings, what do you notice? We're in like a big cave. Outside of the cave is snow. I feel like everyone's laughing and enjoying themselves and just respecting life. So are you feeling good about the place that you found? Yeah, for now. I feel like we're gonna move soon. It feels temporary. I feel like we have to move a lot. The people don't stay very long. Sometimes we stay longer than others. Sometimes we don't. Why do you need to move so much? Food or weather? I feel like it's both. So is that your normal way of life? Yeah, it feels that way. How do you find food? I think we hunt. I feel like we mostly eat meat. So I'd like you to see yourself in one of the hunts and just tell me what you're hunting. It feels like big animals. I don't know what they are, they're just big. Do you hunt alone or as a group? A group. And is everything shared within the community? Mm -hmm. The hunters bring it back and different people prepare the meat and we dry it, we cook it, we use the bones as tools. We make paint maybe with the fat. We use it for stews and different things we do. We preserve it so we can put it in our sacks. I feel like our sacks are made with fur as well. Some fur is brown, some is white. It's just different colors. How long is it cold and snowy where you live? I feel like it's usually cold and snowy. Just worse at certain times than others. And do you have things that you wear to protect your hands and your head? Yeah. 
we just have big head covering and then our sleeves are really long, almost like a cape that cover our hands. It doesn't seem like gloves, it's different type of covering. What about your feet? We have the boots that come up high with fur inside of them. So do you feel comfortable in the snow? Yeah, I feel like I'm used to it. I know it's cold, but I'm used to it. So on the count of three, I'd like you to move to the next significant event in that life. One, two, and three. Tell me what happens. Mm, the snow melted. Melted, almost gone. I feel like we don't know what to do. Why is that? Because the animals that we hunt, we can't find them. The temperature changed. Or maybe we traveled too far. Is this unusual? Yes. So usually you have snow all the time? Most of the time, yeah. And so what do you do then? Keep traveling. Keep going forward. Why do you not return back? We're looking for a different way. Why is that? The old way wasn't working. What wasn't working? The animals, there weren't enough of them. We have to keep going. So you couldn't find enough animals in the snow? No. But now that there is less snow, or no snow, you still can't find the animals? We have to find different animals. We had to learn to gather small animals instead of one big animal. We see what animals they eat. We eat what they eat. We are one with the animal. We still are in caves. So you observe what the animals eat and then you gather the same thing? Yes. And what do you notice they eat? Berries, different plants. And do you eat all of that raw or do you cook any of it? We preserve it somehow, but we cook it too. We do both. And as you keep traveling, is there any snow left? No. And how do you all feel about it? It's easier to travel because we have to carry less things. What do you do with those things? Sometimes we have to leave them behind. We use them until we can't and then we leave them. So are you able to find new sources of food? Mm-hmm. We eat little animals. We forage. We live by a stream. We follow the stream. I feel like I'm old. How old? Like, it's getting difficult to travel. I feel like I used to lead, now I follow. I'm in the back. Do you always stay in the caves, or do you build outside shelter? We don't build our shelter. We find a natural shelter, and then live there. Throughout your life, do you run into any other people? Sometimes. I feel like that's why we move. What do you mean by that? We don't feel safe around other people. How about others? Do they feel safe around you? Yeah, we're nice people, but I feel like we're weary of strangers. So Maybe you... they are weary of us since they don't know us. So you prefer to just stay by yourselves? Yes. And then when we can't travel anymore, we stay behind. What do you mean you can't travel? When some people don't choose to move, some do. Why would someone choose not to move? They're old, they can't, or they want to stay with 
who's staying behind. They don't want to leave their people sometimes because they like it. They're comfortable. They don't see the reason to move, and that's okay. So, about how many people are in your community at this point? Um, I feel like it grows rapidly, but then people stay behind, so it's bigger, but not much, maybe 50 people. And so I'd like you to move now to the point where you perhaps choose to stay, either because of your age or for another reason, and just tell me what happens. I'm old, and I stay. Some are young. I feel like there's different births. That's why some stay. I just feel peaceful. We're by a waterfall, trees. How many people stay with you? It starts out smaller, five, but I feel like it grows to more people. Half were old and half were young. Where do you settle? In the rocks. Is the weather still warm? It changes, but it stays warmer than what I'm used to. It feels wet. Most of the time it's damp, always a little damp. Are you able to find things that you need? Mm-hmm. Did you ever take a partner? No. So I'd like you to move to the last day of your life and tell me what you're experiencing. Peace. Satisfaction. Is there anyone with you? Yes. The family that I settled with. The older person I feel like is gone. But the family that I settled with was growing and I feel as though I almost became like adopted by them. I was like a grandpa figure. Become aware if they are communicating with you in some way. Yes. How are they communicating? Words. And what are they saying to you? I feel like they're reassuring me that I am able to go if I want to, or I can stay if I want to. Are you ill? No, I don't feel ill, I just feel tired. So with the next breath, just allow your spirit to lift out of your body gently. And as you look back at the life and the people you left behind, what are your first thoughts and feelings? Satisfaction. I see the others in different places. It's like I see different dots on the map. Little clusters of my people just distributed different locations. In the snow, I feel like we were on a mountain maybe. And that's why we had so much snow. We were towards the top. There were lots of caves. I think we traveled down the mountain, and that's why there wasn't snow anymore. But some are on one side of the mountain, some are on the other, some are on the mountain still. I think my people move after I pass. I feel like they were waiting for me to go, and then they were going to find somewhere else. So just allow yourself to continue to drift time and close in the gestures of being in the no direction at all, simply be guided to another side of the lake and an examine. And once again, tell me the first impression that you get as you reach the surface. I feel young. About what age? Younger than five. And as you look down at your feet, what do you notice you're wearing? Shoes. What do they look like? They clip on the Velcro. It's like a clip, buckled maybe. And what about your body? What are you wearing? Some kind of stockings. 
I have a little brown hat on, maybe suspenders. I have blonde hair. It's short. Are you in a male or female body? I'm a boy. And what do you notice around you? I'm outside. And what does the weather feel like? Warm, not hot. I feel like it's spring. And what are you doing standing outside? I think I'm playing. What are you playing with? I have sticks, rocks. Is there anyone with you? Yes, but they're watching from afar. Just become aware of who is watching you. I feel like it's a mother. What else is next to you? Pebbles and rocks, sticks and dirt, a pathway. Where does that pathway lead? I don't know. I don't go very far. I feel like I stay close to my mom wherever she's at. I don't feel like I'm old enough to understand what is out there. Of course. Are you close to where you live? Yes. So when I count to three, you're going to see yourself standing in front of the place where you live. One, two, and three. Just tell me what you see. It's a small house. Big enough. Looks like it's built from different rocks. I feel like there's wood, too. It's hard to tell. So I'd like you to go inside the house and just tell me what kinds of things you notice there. A table, doors, bedrooms. So go to the place where you sleep. It's a bed, wood and straw maybe. A blanket, it's not like a quilt maybe. Now go to a room where your mom usually sleeps. And what do you see there? A bed looks similar to mine. Different fabrics in a pile, like a rocking chair. I feel like she makes whatever we wear. So now tell me who lives in this house other than you and your mom. My dad. I think I have a brother. An older brother or younger? Both. I have, two. I have an older brother who's with my dad and a younger brother who feels like they're one. They walk. They don't talk. Blonde hair. And where is your dad now? I think he's working. What does he do? I think he cuts trees down. Does logging? So your older brother works with him? Mm-hmm. He's like 10. Tell me how you feel about your family. I feel safe with them. Do your mom and dad get along? Mm -hmm. I feel like they do. And when you grow up, do you want to start helping your dad? Yeah, I want to as soon as I can. On the count of three, you're going to move forward in time to the next significant moment in that life. One, two, and three. And tell me what happens. I'm older. My hair's darker. It's dark, light brown, sandy blonde. How old are you? 17, maybe. I feel like I'm an adult almost, or... Not very old, still. I work with my dad. I work hard. I like to work hard. How is your whole family doing? Good. My older brother doesn't live with us. He's married and he's moved away. We still see him, though. I haven't met anyone, so I'm not getting married soon. What opportunities do you have for meeting people is there a bigger community around you? Big enough. Not huge. Do you live in a town? Close. 
but not in. I feel like we have a little bit of a walk. I don't think we drive. Does everybody walk everywhere? We can use horses if we go far or have to move heavy logs. Do you have a horse? We have one, but we use it for work. Mm -hmm. Is there enough work for you year round? Mm -hmm. I feel like I just work a lot. I like to work. So when you have some time to relax, when you have some free time, what do you do? Sometimes I go to town and drink alcohol with different people that I work with or just in the town. So you don't just work with your father? There's others that work with us. They are the same level. Where do you go to drink? Feels like it's a bar or saloon maybe. How do you like going out and socializing? I think I like it. So is that where you may meet a potential partner? I think that's my thought process. Do you ever meet anyone there? No. Are there other opportunities or other places that are more appropriate? Yeah. Like what? I feel like I meet a sister of someone I work with. She's younger than me. She's in school still. Where does she go to school? In the town. What kind of school do they have? It's one building and all the grades are in it. I didn't finish school, I don't think. I think I started working with my dad. That's what we do. The men don't finish school. So you went to the same school? Mm -hmm. But we didn't know each other well because I was older and then I left school early. So on the count of three, I'd like you to move to the next significant moment or event in that life. One, two, and three, and tell me what happens. I feel like we get married. With that girl that you met? I think it's her. And why did you decide to marry her? She's funny. She's smart. She's not like the other girls that I've met. She's just different. She has dark hair. She's kind of witty. I like that she seems to be more independent than most women, maybe. She thinks for herself. And where do you live after you get married? We build a house close to the town. I feel like it's a cabin. And what do you do for a living? I continue to do the logs. She's a teacher. I feel like she teaches. She's really smart. I feel like I respect her a lot. Move to the next significant moment in that life. One, two, and three. And tell me what happens. I feel like I take over my dad's business along with my wife's brother. We work together. How old are you? 30 or 40, somewhere in between there. Does your dad stop working? He can't do physical labor. He doesn't cut the trees anymore. He helps take care of my mom. I feel like she's sick. What is she experiencing? Weakness. How's your wife? She's good. She teaches still. She helps with my mom, too. I feel like my mom can't walk anymore. Do you have any children of your own? Yeah. A girl. She has dark hair. She's funny. How do you feel about your family and your life? Content. So on the count of three, I'd like you to move to the last day of your life. 
one, two, and three. What are you experiencing? I think there was a fire. Where? My house. How did it start? We had a fire to keep the house warm. An ash landed on something and caught fire. I was sleeping. I woke up and everyone got out, but I didn't. Something fell on me and I couldn't get up. And then I was breathing smoke. And I remember telling them to leave. I could see their shadows leave. And then I stopped breathing. So allow your spirit to gently lift out of your body and immediately there will be an ability to breathe freely and comfortably. As you look back at that life, how do you reflect on it? I feel bad for leaving them too soon. We were happy. How old were you when you passed? I feel like my daughter was still young. She was like maybe 10. I feel like we wanted to have more children, but we didn't. I couldn't. Why couldn't you? I don't know if there was a reason that we knew of. I just think we it didn't happen. We tried. As you expand your awareness, from your soul perspective, tell me what purpose you had for that life journey. Hard work love, determination. Now become aware of why the events unfolded the way they did and why you passed at a reasonably young age. I felt like my family needed to move on. In what way? What did it allow them to do? Move to somewhere bigger for my daughter to get a better education, my wife to reach her full potential. I felt like I was holding them back. So from your soul perspective, see how their lives unfolded and if your exit made the impact that you were looking for on their journey. Yes and no. I felt like I wanted her to have more kids. She didn't. And I felt like I wanted her to go um, teach at a bigger school and reach more people, go somewhere to a bigger city. They did. She didn't have more kids, so like I wanted her to, or thought that she wanted. So make sure you look at it from the soul perspective. With your exit, did it give her the opportunities that she needed in her own journey? Yes, yeah, she moved. She had to move to a bigger city to pursue more for herself. I want you to bring your attention to the body. What was the cause of death then? The so, smoke. Okay. So I want you to allow the lungs of that body to expel all of that smoke. So all of that soot and smoke is vented out until you see the lungs clear, releasing this trauma from the memory of the soul. Is it released? Good. So now we we'll begin to drift away. I would like the higher consciousness of Brandy to step forward. May I speak to you and ask you some questions? Yes. So I know that you could have brought forward many different lifetimes for Brandy to look at today, but you brought forward first a life of a young man who was a captain of a ship and died from stabbing on his ship. Then a man who was the leader of his community living in caves. And then a young man that became a logger and then died in a fire. So could you please tell us why you selected those lives for her to examine? The first one told me to think through actions and consider others and not to act on emotion. 
The cave taught me to be content with the moment of life I'm in, whatever that is. And uh, the last life taught me selflessness and to put those that you love before yourself and the power of hard work. Why are these things significant for her to see today? How are they relevant to her current life experience? It's showing me the importance of the people around me and the value that they bring to me. I don't have to feel like I'm alone and I should let the people around me in. I can rely on them. It showed me in the past how much I needed the people around me and that I still need those people now and how much value they can bring to my life. I would like to ask about her connection with her husband. I want you to tell me about the soul contract or agreement that they made together. Explain to me the roles that they chose to play in each other's lives. We travel together and play different roles in each other's lives. It's not always this husband and wife. Was soul present in any of the lives that were presented? I feel like he was my dark-haired wife. In the third life? Yes. Okay. So, as you become aware of the soul agreement made before the current life, what contribution did they agree to make to each other's journey? They just enjoy being together. They bring a certain happiness, comfortable feeling. In two of the lives, her death was brought about by a physical trauma to the body, a stabbing to the chest, and then um, suffocation from smoke which are both in the chest area. We released the trauma from her soul experience. I'd like you to scan her body right now and tell me if there's anything else around the lungs or chest area that still has any remaining impact from those lives or if there's anything else that needs to be addressed or needs attention. No. Has the trauma been released? Yes. Okay, good. The last question I have is, she was involved in a car accident in 2019, and she was thrown from the vehicle as she was driving it, and she experienced something while she was in the air. So I'd like you to rewind to the moment that it started so she can have a greater awareness of how it unfolded. I went through my sunroof. There was a spirit that guided me to the ground safely and protected me as my body was on the ground, just took the impact for me. Become aware of that spirit. You will begin to recognize it if you know who it is or what your connection to it is. Yeah, it was a grandma. My grandma passed away several years before that. I feel like it was her. I would like to call on the soul of that grandmother and see if she would be willing to come forward now and connect with you. And if she's willing, just let me know. She is. So you will see her or experience her coming towards you. And as she comes forward, tell me what you experience. Love. How do you greet each other? We hug. And what does she have to say to you? She's always here. Now can she confirm if it was her who carried you from the sunroof to the ground? Yes, sir. 
Brandy wanted to know why, even though she was so violently thrown from the car, she had almost no injuries. Can you help her understand the significance of that event? I just hear it's not my time to go. This seemed like a potential exit point for her, which she did not take. Can you tell her why it was planned as a potential exit point? Just had the choice and decided that I had more to do or learn. Is that answer satisfactory to Brandy's conscious mind or is there something else she wants to know? No, she doesn't want to know anymore. Now, is there anything else that the soul of the grandmother has to say or communicate to Brandy? No. Okay. Then you may say your goodbyes for now, knowing that she is always here with you. And watch her stepping back and fading away. I'm going to ask the higher consciousness now to recede to where it belongs with much love and thanks for the help and information that it has given Brenda today.